Good afternoon, colleagues. Welcome to today's session. Can I please give some of the other colleagues that are battling to connect a uh, five minute, please? Luando. Uh, okay, Mama, you can, we can start out at five past. Okay, thank you. The window is my camera fine. It's off. We can't see you, ma'am. Okay, just one sec. Now. It's off. It's still yeah, off. You can. You can. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. okay, I'm going to start Luando in the next two minutes. Okay.
Sorry, uh, Mr. Luando, you don't have any more apologies, eh? No, I don't. Okay, so those are the apologies, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm now going to be moving on with the agenda of this program as follows. There is a, there's some house rules that we also want to make uh, clear with our colleagues. So all questions to be raised will be kindly dealt with after the session has been completed by hand sign, uh, where you'll, you'll raise your hand, as well as colleagues can utilize the chat box to uh, drop in their questions. Please have your cell phones on silent if possible. All mics should be muted during the session. And I also want to take this opportunity of uh, introducing Luando. He is the secretary of um, the NSP Pillar 3, who will be assisting me through the session. So ladies and gentlemen, I now want to take this opportunity of welcoming our chairperson of the South African Board for Sheriffs, Advocate Mark Morgan. Advocate Mark Morgan is the chairperson of the South African Board for Sheriffs. He was appointed by the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services by our Honorable Minister, Mr. Ronald Lamola, as the chairperson of the South African Board for Sheriffs on the 4th of June, 2021. And he's currently acting judge of the High Court of South Africa. Wow, that's awesome news. He obtained his law qualification at the University of Johannesburg. He served his articles of clerkship and was ad admitted as an attorney of the High Court and practiced as such at one of the big five business law firms in Sandton, where he specializes in tax law and commercial litigation until he was called to the bar. He completed his privilege with with and, and was admitted to the Johannesburg Society of Advocates and commenced these practice at Maisel Chambers. Advocate Morgan gives guest lectures at the Faculty of Law, University of Johannesburg and authorized academic articles published in prestigious law journals. Advocate Morgan presides in cases at the Small Claims Court Advocate Morgan was also appointed as a judge, as a judge's associate to Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa, Mwing Mwing, at the Constitutional Court of Republic of South Africa. More recently, Advocate Morgan was elected and appointed as the Vice President of the African Union of Judicial Officers, a regional pre prestigious organization well known within the sheriff's profession. Well done, Mr. Morgan. So colleagues, you can see our chairperson is actually working very, very hard in this profession with efficiency and different parts of collaboration. And now I want to take this opportunity of giving our chairperson the platform to introduce himself to the house. So over to you, Mr. Mark Morgan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Thomas, for that uh, program director, for that mouthful and uh, overly generous introduction. But uh, good afternoon, colleagues as well, all those that are here, dignitaries that are present, and uh, all colleagues that that we get to work with in our various spaces. Um, yeah, thank you very much once again. I must extend my my, my words of gratitude to the organizing team that made this event today a success. Um, I don't think that if you had not put in all the effort that today would not have been you know, today would have been possible. But thank you very much. Um, topical in this reason why I really wanted to attend uh, this event after I received the invitation was because of the theme or the topic that has been chosen, which is uh, femicide, gender-based violence. We know that it remains a predominant issue 
or scourge in our communities, societies, and, and, and in our country. But uh, gratefully, we have institutions like the Department of Justice, whom um, are headed by our political representatives, who then go to the communities to find out what the issues are, and they then initiate the process where uh, legislation is then drafted and introduced in Parliament. Various consultations are had within that institution's framework with our communities, and we then put into put together measures to to curb such a scourge that our society is suffering from. So that such a topic remains close uh, uh, to my heart, as I believe it is not only. Uh, the politicians or the legislature and the executive's duty or members of the executive's duty to fight this, but each and every person's duty to contribute in one way or another. And it starts at home from where we come from. I mean, uh, it starts there and then we preach it out. But then lastly, colleagues from the South African Board for Sheriff's side, what we are doing in this regard is that other than um, asking really many, many sheriffs whom some like the likes of your Mrs. Thomas and all those that are here in this platform who take the initiative to even go over and beyond without the board having prescribed uh, the various ways of how one can contribute under this theme. They've taken it up upon themselves to do extra work to donate look after those who are in orphanages and suffer victims of gender-based violence and femicide. So all those children who find themselves in orphanages. This we don't only do on Sheriff's World's Day, but I am advised that there are officers that even do it beyond. They don't need a reason or a particular day to give back to our community and to also help the most vulnerable members of our society. So I think it is a challenge for all of us. Um, to try instead of uh, uh, keeping it only through platforms of discussions such as this, but to also show an active contribution by ensuring that we put in our physical strength and uh, a contribution towards ensuring that the societal scourge is eventually um, lessened um, and hopefully destroyed which is what we look forward to. But thank you very much, program director and colleagues, for inviting me to this session. I really look forward to listening in and engaging with all. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mark Morgan. Thank you so much. Um, sorry, Mr. Luando, is um, uh, our chairperson of the NS people uh, on this webinar, Advocate Trace Kombola? Uh, she's not in yet. However, she will get in during the course of the day. Okay. Okay. Uh, colleagues, uh, for those that do not understand what the uh, NSP Pillar 3 is all about. I'm just going to give you a short uh, um, introduction of the NSP uh, uh, 3. So the National Strategic Plan Pillar 3 Collaborative is a multi-sectoral co collective established by government in 2020 to monitor the country's implementation of the inventions outlined in Pillar 3 of the National Strategic Plan on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide. It draws representation from government and civil society experts in the gender-based violence and femicide sector. Okay, for uh, our colleagues on the SHARES platform, so that is what the in introduction of the NSP3 pillar is all about. Okay, so moving forward uh, with the agenda, um, I've also been tasked to also um, 
uh, enlighten you on pro bono services. So I am going to enlighten you on that. And thereafter, I'll hand over the meeting to Mr. Iqbal Muhammad, who will then continue with the facilitation of this uh, webinar. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, pro bono work. We, the sheriffs, we do not look upon this representation merely as a business opportunity only, but also to reaffirm our commitment to any initiative against gender-based violence and femicide. We have in the past by those sheriffs who were in a financial position to do so, provided pro bono services during the 16 day of activism, as well as discounted and free services to the needy during the rest of the year. And we will continue to do so. Thank you very much. That was on pro bono work. And now I'm going to now hand over this meeting over to Mr. Iqbal Mohammed. And Mr. Mohammed is an acting sheriff at Rudaport South. Over to you, Mr. Mohammed. Thank you so much, uh, John. Uh, thank you. Um, John, I intend to address the um, uh, on the following issues over here. Uh, why should the work be handed back to sheriffs? Why should the work not be handed to the SAP and to the clerks of the court? And on the question of budgetary constraints that the Department of Justice uh, has in not allowing sheriffs to continue with this work. May, may I just uh, first and foremost thank you and everybody else for organizing this meeting. And again, just to re-emphasize, uh, uh, all people on the NSP3, uh, on the Pillar 3, that we really appreciate all the work that has been done by your organization, uh, all the uh, intended legislative, legislative amendments. We fully support those amendments in that it would give more effect in the protection of uh, victims of gender-based violence and femicide. We uh, thank you for allowing us to comment and to participate in this very, very vital uh, issue uh, that is so horrendous uh, in, in, uh, in our society and so become more and more prevalent over all these years. So thank you for allowing us to participate in these meetings and to see where we can contribute. Uh, well, so what we'd like to do is, uh, firstly, we say that why should the work be handed back to sheriffs? We want to, uh, firstly, ma'am, this work has traditionally been done by sheriffs over a number of years. Uh, and we have the expertise, we have the know-how, we have a national footprint virtually in the whole of the country, except for a few posts where because of the, the demographics and the geography, the population is so widespread where no sheriff, even though those posts were advertised, uh, would be able to take on the post because it is simply not economically viable. Under those circumstances, ma'am, we can understand why uh, the SAP needs to intervene and, and the clerks of the court needs to intervene in uh, having, in rendering the services of uh, family violence uh, uh, interdicts and maintenance subpoenas. But in all other circumstances, we believe that we sheriffs should in fact be doing the work. Now, let, <clears throat> uh, insofar as the advantages in using a sheriff are concerned, as I've mentioned, we are trained and versed in serving these processes, which and as they always fall within our domain. We are prepared and willing to do all the services from the word go. That is from the moment the instructions is received uh, from the very outset and not, for example, after the clerk is served, now we must proceed with the execution, which includes now the removal, the attachment, the removal, uh, uh, the auction and all of those things. So it makes no sense for, for, for the clerk to, end, to serve the document and for the sheriff to do the rest because the clerk doesn't have the rest of the facilities or the requirements, legal requirements in fulfilling the duties of uh, executing a, a, uh, uh, a judgment on a maintenance subpoena. 
so for example, just to take it further, the clerks of the court don't run a trust account. The clerks, must the clerks of the court be burdened with uh, 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 perhaps I'm, I should digress, I'm digressing a bit over here. Let me just, let me just then stick to the point here as to why it should be handed over to shadows. In addition to what I've just said is that our tariffs are gazetted and are subject to taxation. And most importantly, many rural sheriffs survive on this work from the Department of Justice, uh, which make their offices more viable. To, to lose this work would result in many of our rural sheriffs having to close down their offices. And this would then result in the, uh, the, the non-delivery of service uh, at worst, or ad adversely ad uh, uh, affecting the access to justice. So we ask uh, the department please to consider these when considering sheriffs. Uh, on the next point, why should the work not be handed to the SAP? Now, uh, the, the uh, family violence interdicts by its very nature needs to be served by way of urgency. We can't treat this document as any other process that can be served within five or 10 days, because by then the victim may be, <laughs> uh, heaven forbid, but you know, uh, uh, the complainant or the victim over here, uh, uh, terrible things could happen to the point of that per per person being killed or murdered. Uh, and uh, uh, as sheriffs, we are always sensitive as to the urgency and we will commit ourselves to this urgency and serve these documents as urgent as possible. We are so motivated to, to, to deal with these uh, uh, documents on an urgent basis, is that it's a question of financial viability. With all due respect to the SAP, and I'm in no way trying to demean the services rendered by the SAP, uh, uh, that the SAP is not motivated in serving these documents urgently. So come the end of the month, end of the month, whether that document has been served or not, that member of the SAP whose duty it was to serve, he's going to get his full salary. The sheriff, on the other hand, if that document, if that process hasn't been served, there is no income for the sheriff. So there's a, a financial incentive for the sheriff to ensure that the document is served by way of urgency. Again, uh, we respectfully submit, I respectfully submit that the SAP has got its hands full. We all are aware of the dire situation in which our country is with regards to criminality. Now, relating particularly to uh, gender-based violence, uh, are we utilizing the best uh, uh, skill sets uh, are we utilizing the best skill set, the best skills, uh, skill sets most effectively? A sheriff's skill set is serving the process. A police skill set is, of course, we do admit that they do have the authority to serve these documents, but in, but in addition to that, and unlike the sheriff, the police can enter into a premises where there is imminent danger where there is a crime about or believed to be committed or about to be committed, to stop gender-based violence, to stop a husband beating up his wife or his children over there, to remove drugs or dangerous weapons, uh, to, to warn uh, or to step, to keep parties aside when there's an argument which could potentially lead to harm or to persons being injured, uh, to, to make their presence felt that, look, this type of behavior is unacceptable, or Mr. So-and-so, uh, please, we are the police, we are here, we are here to protect your wife. Now, the sheriff doesn't have that skill set or that authority. The police have that. Must the police then be used for serving these processes or for doing or for fulfilling the other requirements for which they are fully trained and for which they are fully required? I state so, sir, because, you know, because for the last eight to 10 years, for the last eight to 10 years, we as sheriffs cannot get assistance from police when we need their assistance, uh, particularly when we have to execute 
in terms of where we need to attach in terms of executions or remove goods or evictions. And the reason that is given to us is that we are too busy. We, we cannot have, we don't have sufficient manpower. And Mr. Sheriff, we are therefore unable to assist you. And of course, ma'am, we fully acknowledge that the police do have their hands full. And so on the one hand, the sheriff's work doesn't get done. The execution process doesn't get done. The police are unable to assist us. And yet we are burdening the police again with these uh, family interdicts and the maintenance supinas. Uh, I don't think that we are using the police skill and the police uh, ability to, to the best of what the taxpayer uh, requires. As an example, I'll give you, there's a case, the Marimane Communal Property Association case uh, versus the SAP Uppington. It's a Northern Cape High Court uh, case in Kimberley. I can give the full citation. But the Minister of Police was in fact, uh, a judgment was given against the Minister of Police because the police refused to assess the community in serving interdicts. Uh, 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 and the, 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 the judgment was so scathing that the, uh, the minister had to pay costs on an attorney client scale. And this case typifies the volume of work the police have got nationally all over the country and the police just can't cope. So why add on this additional burden to the police when in fact there is someone else who, is, uh, who has the expertise and the inclination uh, to do the type of work that we are asking for that is the serving of the maintenance uh, supremas. Then there is a, another point that uh, uh, I want to bring to you, uh, I'd like to bring to your attention please in that for example, I'm, I'm just reading this article here from the Law Society of this case of Sitali versus Minister of Police, where again, um, the, the plaintiff in this matter, knowing that he's going to be attacked as the police for protection, was not given, given the necessary protection. Uh, and as a result, yeah, his wife was shot. Uh, and uh, uh, well, I don't know if she was died at that point, but placed in a house, in a building, and that building burned down. After the incident, the police pitched up, and the police arrested the, the victim's husband on the basis of uh, being in possession of, a, uh, of an unlicensed firearm, and which turns out that one of the perpetrators who committed that offense, that gun, in fact, belonged to one of the perpetrators. Now, judgment was given against the minister, uh, against the police over here, uh, the minister of police, and there is millions and millions and millions of rents that are being used and spent for damages claims against the SAP, as we are aware. I'm just using this case as an example because this was the judgment, the most recent judgment given on the 2nd of August, uh, 2022. So, uh, 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 coming back to that point, the, uh, the, the, the millions that are used over here can be used, uh, the, the millions that are being used for damages and things like that can be used instead of paying for those damages, give the work to the sheriff, uh, uh, take away those work from the police and hand it over to the sheriff so that the uh, uh, police are free to continue to do their work. Um, so that is my uh, base uh, case as to why we believe that the matter should be taken away from the police and handed over to the sheriff as against the police. So again, Madam, if I may just mention the clerk of the court, uh, we fully understand where the clerk needs to serve. But when the clerk goes out, all work, uh, uh, issuing of documents and uh, filing, uh, and and uh, uh, doing whatever other court work is required in preparation for the day's work or the next day's work comes to a standstill. A clerk can't be out of the office and in the office, uh, out of court and in court at the same time. And it's not good for one functionary to go and serve the subpoena, and thereafter, if judgment is served, if, if judgment is uh, granted on a uh, 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 maintenance uh, uh, subpoena that now the sheriff has got to step in because the 
clerk of the court doesn't uh, have the facility to remove goods, to store goods, to insure the goods, to auction the goods, to deal with interpleaders, appeals, reviews, all of these things which the sheriff needs to face. So why then give the thing to the clerk of the court just to do that little bit, and then the sheriff has got to sit with the rest of the headaches. Give the sheriff that work and allow the sheriff to continue with all the work one time. And that, that we know that there's proper service because our objective, uh, 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 again, for the sake of appearances, uh, that clerk is part of that court. Uh, what if that document is in dispute, whether it's been properly served or not? What perception is given to the public out over there that because the clerk is now in the court with that magistrate, and of course, I am certainly not trying to cast any aspersions, I'm just looking at this as a potential problem. If uh, 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 the public now sees, but that magistrate and the clerk are in the same court, so whatever that clerk says goes, you see. So again, we ask, please allow the sheriff to serve these documents uh, uh, in place instead of the clerk of the court. I now just want to deal with the final issue here on the question of uh, uh, budgetary restraints. Now, from what we understand is that the, the, the work has been taken away from sheriffs and handed over to the SAP and to the clerks because the Department of Justice uh, had budgetary constraints. Uh, and if we are correct, we respectfully submit that this argument doesn't hold any water. Firstly, uh, if a police, for example, or a clerk were to go out to go and serve, they are not using their own vehicle. They are not using their own uh, uh, fuel. They are not using their own time. They are not using their own uh, maintenance uh, to the vehicles and whatever. All of this is given by government. So they are given a budget to do this work. So why, why then take why not take away that budget from the people who have got other work to do and hand over this work to the sheriffs who don't have this work and who urgently, we, many sheriffs are in dire straits, uh, uh, if I may put it as, as, as blunt as that, who urgently require this work to sustain their livelihoods. It is just a question I respectfully submit of moving one budget, of moving the budget uh, for the services of these documents away from the SAP to the sheriffs. And the only additional thing a sheriff is charging over there is his return of service, because that is the work that he's doing. And that is in terms of the tariffs. And of course, I, we submit that there may have been one or two sheriffs who may have gone overboard, but uh, 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 with their costs. But all of us cannot be punished because of those one or two that went overboard. And there is a manner of bringing these sheriffs to book by way of having those uh, 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 overcharged bills, uh, overcharged returns, text. Uh, so it's not as if there is no ways in which if a sheriff overcharges, that's it, we can't, we have to pay the sheriff or, or uh, the, the sheriffs are, are, are overcharging and all of them have to be punished for this. So all that we are saying, and most importantly, if government has got all this money to pay for all of those damages that, are being, that the police need to pay when they are being sued, if a fraction of that money is taken over and given over to the Department of Justice to finance this type of services, Believe you me, the work will get done. We understand that there is a massive backlog with the clerks of the courts and with the SAP because they do have other works. And here, here are sheriffs twiddling thumbs waiting for this work. The work can carry on. The wheels of justice will be moving. Uh, sheriffs will be motivated because, uh, of course, to stay in their post because at least there is something to back them up uh, financially. Uh, the wheels of justice are going to turn. And most importantly, is that a fraction of those monies paid for all of those damages, which the police are unable, because the police are, for whatever reason, unable to cope with their work, uh, take away that work from them, give it to us. That part of the problem is less work for the police. They can then focus on the crime. We can focus on the service. And it's a win-win situation for everybody. 
So I, I may be thinking very simplistically here, and I'm subject to, to, to correction, but I respectfully submit it's just a question of taking away uh, that budget allocated for the services of these processes from the SAP to the Department of Justice, which in turn then needs to pay over all of these things to the sheriffs. Uh, man, I think that covers all the points that I wanted to uh, raise. And uh, I'm not so sure if there's any questions or, or if, if there's anything that I need to clarify. But I thank you so much for allowing me to address you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mohamed, Mr. Mohamed, for that efficient and um, encouraging uh, presentation. Uh, colleagues, by a, a wave of hand in your, um, uh, with regards to any questions that needs to be uh, raised to Mr. Mohamed, uh, you're most welcome to do so now. We will do, uh, we will look, uh, Luando, uh, you can just assist me with that, please. Okay, we're yeah. so is, is there any questions that any of the colleagues on this platform would like to raise with Mr. Mammoth? Any clarity? So I take it there's no questions. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, there's a whole lot of questions uh, is in the chat box. Mr. Mohamed, I don't know whether you want to tackle this now. Mr. Mohamed? Sorry, John. Okay, let's, let's hear what the questions are and maybe somebody else can also answer. Yes, if there's uh, any other uh, um, um, Shares from the WhatsApp group one and two, you're most welcome to also raise uh, questions, deputies, admin staff. Please feel free to uh, ask your questions. Uh, good afternoon, Madam uh, Chair. Can I just raise not a question, but just something that from my side? Yes, sir. Sure, you can go ahead. I'm my name is Kika. I'm the sheriff of Barclay West for high and lower. I had two weeks ago, I spoke to my court manager and then I questioned her about the interdicts and the maintenance summonses. They took that away from me. I'm now seven years the sheriff there. When I started, I used to get it. Then it just like disappeared. Then she wanted to uh, know if I'm... Um, have I got my Fidelity Fund certificate, which I proved and I emailed it to her immediately. Then she gave an instruction to her clerks that does the interdicts and the, the, the maintenance because the maintenance has been given to the investigating officers. I found the office last week and then I spoke to another lady. She wasn't available. Monday I spoke to her and then she guaranteed me that today, this Friday, I would have gotten a phone call from our office for the subpoenas, but nothing has happened so far. So I don't know about the other, other districts, um, if it happened already, but I will notify on our groups if I do get, because on Monday I'll be going back to Barclay West just to go uh, inquire about those things. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, sir. And then maybe way moving forward, we can um, assist you with that after you have been to your meeting. And then we can actually discuss it with the heads of court and maybe uh, forward that to um, Advocate Yaki Vessel for some assistance in it as well. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Is there any other questions from the house? Any other sharers, admin staff? Um, you can go ahead, Mr. Mohamed. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, ma'am, I think you forgot uh, item four on the agenda. Uh, if anybody's going to handle that, please. Hello, John, are you with me? 
Um, okay. Uh, colleagues, on behalf of um, WhatsApp group one and two, we actually uh, uh, sent through an email to Advocate uh, Praise Kumbula, the chairperson of uh, the NSP Pillar 3, uh, with uh, donating 6,000 for a laptop uh, on behalf of WhatsApp, our WhatsApp group one and two. Uh, Luando, do you have any feedback for us uh, uh, on this proposal, Luando? Uh, not really, Ms. Jun. However, we did receive the email and uh, the chairperson of NSP Pillar 3 did receive the email and uh, she was supposed to actually respond to you. However, as I have already uh, discussed it with you is that she is currently busy with other reports. So whenever she has time, she'll actually have a meeting with you and then that's where everything will unfold. Thank you very yeah. much, Luando. Um, Mr. Mohamed, so as soon as I receive, thank you, no, that's fine. That's, thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so please, you heard Mr. Mohamed's presentation on 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 the sheriffs getting back the uh, maintenance and the domestic violence uh, work. So, in conclusion, what have you come to? We would love to hear, uh, uh, you know, some comments and submissions. And um, on behalf of myself, uh, Mr. Mohamed, um, our chairperson, advocate Mark Morgan, uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, making time to join us on a Friday afternoon for this uh, webinar in terms of uh, um, our profession. And I also want to uh, take this opportunity to also thank uh, colleagues from the NSP Pillar 3 for also making time to join us. And a big thank you to Luando, Luando for all his assistance. Thank you, Luando, for your efficiency and assistance. At, as always, I appreciate. So if there's no more questions for the questions, we now... John, uh, sorry, may I just... Uh, can I... Yes, sure, Mr. Uh, Thank you, John. Is there, if there's anybody from the Department of Justice, can we perhaps get a, some sort of response? Uh, if there's anybody on this group from the uh, who's part of this uh, uh, meeting, if there's any comments from anybody from the Department of Justice, please. Uh, Luando, um, I know Max normally joins us from the Department of Justice and Ms. Singh, but I I can't see them on the. Uh, you know, uh, uh, joining us on this meeting. So I don't think they both are here on this meeting, Luando. Hi, Luando. Uh, sorry, Miss June, I didn't get that. I was in a phone call, sorry. Sorry, Luando. I see normally on our uh, NSP Pillar 3 meetings, uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Singh, Mr. Singh is normally uh, uh, joining us on our meetings from the Department of Justice as well as Max. I don't see either one of them on here from the Department of Justice. Is there any uh, court managers on this meeting uh, or anybody from the Department of Justice on this meeting? Uh, what we should do, because I'm not so sure about that, we can just ask to the floor if there's any, they can actually just raise their hand and that I'm pretty sure they can just give us a light. Okay. Colleagues, is there any one that has joined us on this meeting from the Department of Justice? Uh, I see there's a Renee de Villiers, Western Cape. From the chat group, I can... Are you from the Department of Justice, ma'am? I'm from the Department of Health. Oh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Mohamed, I don't think there's anybody from, from the department on this webinar, eh? All right. No, I see they are, but uh, I mean, I don't think that perhaps they're not authorized to comment Maybe or whatever. But, yeah. uh, no problem. No problem. Thank you so much, Madam Chair, for, for that. Thank you very much, June. Okay. I see uh, Mr. Pin. Uh, this uh, hand raised here, Luando from Pinar Ami. 
Amia. Is there a question? He just dropped his hand raised. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this opportunity of thanking each and every one of you for taking your time and joining us for the uh, webinar for this afternoon. May you all have an awesome weekend. And um, Mr. Momo, thank you once again. Luando, thank you for your assistance. And we also want to take this opportunity of also thanking our chairperson, advocate Mark Morgan for making himself available. And I am Vincent Nell from the training division of the South African Board for Sheriffs. Thank you very much, Mr. Nell, for joining us. So that's it from me. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I think call this meeting to an end. Close it to an end, ID. Yes, I've got nothing else. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.